the end of a year, basically. Uh, this is the last, definitely going to be the last mentor class we have this year anyways. And while we've done a lot of tutorial and more uh, technical presentations this year and really haven't spent quite as much time on the, I guess, the the business side or the entrepreneurial side and talking about planning and goals and roadmaps and things like that, I think it's a good time to do so. We're getting to the end of the year, which sometimes I always struggle with it a little with this because I try to plan out my year that the last couple of weeks are are slow. Um, I know a lot of people that do. and But on the other hand, I've had the years where things have gotten really crazy. And I know there's some people that is it, it either has gotten that crazy or if you're in you know retail or some of that kind of stuff, it is by you know th- by its nature it's it's crazy. This is the busy time of the year. But even with that, even when you're busy, there are some. I think for most people, there are some times to reflect at least because you're going to have hopefully a couple of days off. You're going to have you know Christmas Day and Christmas Eve and New Year's Day and New Year's Eve and things like that. And and you also have other people that are on vacations and holidays. It's just one of those parts of a, you know, times of the year uh, toward in the winter. And then also in the summer where things sort of slow down a little bit, you're allowed to, you're more likely to have days where you're, you can go in and just work as opposed to have interactions with coworkers and distractions and things like that. And of course there's the, you know, the famous new year, res- new year's resolution that, is always something that's it's worth thinking about. So after 2020 has been a uh, remarkable year in many ways, I think it's a you know even better a good time for us to go back over some things we've talked about actually in the past, and you know spend a little time thinking about how we can best make 2021 uh, as good a year as possible for us. So I'm just going to go through some things that are. In many ways, I think these are sort of obvious. I think we've, we have talked about them before. They are things that if you sat down, you could probably come up with this list, but it's also one of those things, I think it's an exercise that is good to go through these and, and actually think about it to say, oh yeah, but yeah, I, I do need to make sure I do that. And so the key things we're gonna talk about is looking backwards to look forward, finding a theme or a why, uh, setting the table so that you have a good start as you go into the new year, setting goals and making plans, which are always a part of all of those pieces. So first, let's think about this re- potential for review here. That's you know we're ending a year, so we can look back for the year that's gone pi- gone past, and see how that can maybe help us to look ahead. Now, in looking back, there are some key things that we need to make sure we. Uh, we cover some you know things we check off, and these are these are actually overlooked on a more often than I would expect when I've worked with you know companies and organizations and individuals and we've talked you know whether it's mentoring or consulting and looked at sort of what did you accomplish last year and what do you want to accomplish next year you know or the in the years ahead, and the first one is what went right. Uh, it's very easy to see things that are still on our plate and ignore or forget about the things that we actually accomplished and removed from our plate during the year. So it's good to actually look back and see what, um, what was, what was accomplished, you know, what sort of almost like, where did we start back in January one and how was, what things did we knock off that list? You know, now as we get towards the end of the year, Key th- another key thing is looking at what was unexpected, what things came up this year that took us off track because contingencies are really built on that is trying to think through you know, at least, not necessarily even worst case scenarios, but also uh, likely scenarios. I think 2020 could easily be considered a worst case scenario in many ways. When you look at uh, businesses that you know died or, or were unavailable for long periods of time and, and changes in customer interactions and things like that. So there's particularly when you've had such a big change, there's a lot of opportunity to see what could we maybe have done to prepare for that 
and that's going to help us a lot as we as we start looking forward. Uh, another key thing is what what is it that stopped in the last year or we didn't need to do anymore? Because there are some of those. It may be that there's a uh, there could be a change in regulations, there could be a change in management, there could be a change in style, there could be uh, licensing agreements that end and things like that that can change your business, whether it's regardless of what it is, and not only the business, but even how you uh, do your job. You know, there may be things like, uh, you know, maybe you, you know, this year probably would have been a long way to go, but maybe you worked on Windows XP for a very long time and your company finally got off of it. Um, or maybe you, you know, worked on uh in in-house or on-prem servers, and those have all been moved to the cloud. You know, there's things like that is is trying to mark some of those those changes. And then looking at, you know, still looking back is what what are the things that we did were larger or took more resources, you know, that we underestimated? And then what are the ones that we overestimated? It's trying to get a feel for, you know, where where are we missing the mark on our estimations, whether it's over, over or under? Um, but that's, you know, obviously the ones that are over, we're going to have to figure out how to estimate them higher. And the ones that were under, we're going to have to figure out why we should have estimated those lower so that we you know, get better in, as we move forward. So now based on that, once we, which is not, you know, it's not a, 30 seconds or, you know, just quickly looking at a list. It's really, um, and if you look at each of these, it's, each of these probably is going to be sort of a, a category or two of tasks for us to think about and to sort of, you know, bookmark those as we start looking forward. So based on what we want to do moving forward, then we've, you know, probably got a rough list or a rough idea. Let's take a look at what we're going to be doing that, Maybe some of these projects are similar to the ones that we've succeeded in the past. Uh, and a great, uh, those are great because that means we know how to get it done. A lot of what we do is actually learning what not to do. You know, it's, we have failures and we say, oh, well, we shouldn't do that. But once you get to a point where you do know what is it that we are supposed to do, that's going to be the fastest way to reach your destination. That is, I think, part of the reasons that they, they say success breeds success, because if you know how to do it right and you know you did it right, logically you should be able to reproduce that, that success. A big thing that is a part of that, uh, if you go back to the things that ended or became unneeded, is using that to maybe find some unnecessary tasks that you can take off your list. Uh, sometimes there's going to be things such as uh, maybe there's a bunch of reporting that you did that wasn't needed, or maybe there were features that you started to go down that path and they ended up being unneeded, or there may be entire projects that were uh, started and didn't finish because for some reason or another, they became unnecessary. Examining the reasons for that unnecessariness, if we can make that word up, is going to help you uh, look for maybe warning signs for some of the things that you have on your list to do in the year ahead. It's always uh, take the, you know, go with lessons learned. So what is it that we, we ran into? What were the challenges and the obstacles that we've dealt with in the year behind? And how can we maybe factor those in a little bit as we move forward so that we are at least uh, less impacted in a negative sense by some of these unexpected things. Uh, and it may also adjust how we approach things. You know, maybe we uh, do something that's a little more uh, risk sensitive, essentially, is that we, we think about it and approach it in a way so that we're not, you know, maybe going headlong into it. And instead, we find a way to sort of incrementally get our way into it so that we have a, you know, sort of like climbing a, a mountain, so that you make sure you have a really solid foothold before you move on to the next spot. And then, um, you know, looking at what we've done in the past is there's going to be, you know, we're going to adjust our, our estimates is looking at where we under or overestimated things. Let's try to take that. And uh, a lot of times it's sort of a, it may be as simple as a, a applying a multiplying factor to our estimates. You know, the, 
it's sort of well known that developers, generally speaking, take their estimates and double them, and then you're going to be a lot closer to what a real estimate's going to be. Uh, but we know, I'm sure we all know developers that you're probably going to have to multiply it by five. And there's others out there that are going to you know, really pad their numbers and maybe you have to knock 20% off or something like that, uh, particularly for your personal uh, edification and, and career it's good to get a feel for what your approach, I guess, to estimates are is whether you tend to be maybe overly optimistic or overly pessimistic and, you know, try to build that into your estimates as you move forward. So one of the biggest things that I would like for us to take out of thinking about our year, you know, our upcoming year is finding your why. And this is, really can a lot of what you did in the last year can help you with this. And you want to think about things like what this is probably one of your, your, your biggest things. What is it that you did that you enjoyed and not at a, a big level, but even down to a sort of a micro level, do you enjoy uh, designing? Do you enjoy coding? Do you enjoy requirements? Do you enjoy uh, mentoring or managing or, testing or especially in the world of IT there's so much there's so many facets to the job to your career that it's important to note where did you you know what was the stuff that you like to do and hopefully you know there's somewhere in your year behind, gone by there were things that you enjoyed that you found times where you're like you know what I'm it may be you know challenging and stuff like that but it was in an enjoyable way um, think about market changes. You know, there may be some things that, you know, in looking back, it, or there may be some things that you didn't like to do that now are going to be more likely to show up or things that you did like to do that are going to be more likely to show up. So let's say, for example, you like coding in a specific language. Um, whatever it is, let's say, let's say you enjoy coding in React, you know, you like JavaScript libraries, you, you like doing that. Well, you know, it may be that what you positioned yourself as two years ago, uh, let's say maybe you're a Java developer. Let's just, you know, two years ago, you were a Java developer. You came into last year and you're looking for Java jobs. Well, in the last year, you've realized you really do enjoy React programming. Well, it may be that because of the market changes, now React is something that's much more uh, feasible as a as a career choice for a while. So maybe you can shift gears a little bit and find a way to get more of those you know those React jobs or whatever it is that you you came across. Similar to that is that, you know maybe you found a new love. Maybe there's something that you got to this year that you realize I really enjoy doing that, and. It, it's not, again, this is something I think a lot of us experience in our career because depending on where we're at, we have, I guess for lack of a better term, access to different roles and tasks. And if you're, if you're starting out, you're not going to be, you know, your first month of work, you're not going to be asked probably to manage somebody else if you're a developer. You're not going to be asked probably even to, you may not be asked to talk to a customer or gather requirements or do anything other than just code. But then if you fast forward a couple of years, maybe you're in a situation where now you can be exposed to actually designing, you know, in the real world. And uh, maybe you've, you know, you're growing into, uh, you know, leading a team or things like that. You know, as you go through, maybe you're move up to management or architecture or all these things that we, we don't necessarily have access early in our career that, you know, we maybe we did it a little bit in school, but it's not the same. So that when we got to do it in the real world, you know, in our career, we realized that, wow, I really, I really enjoy doing that. So you want to think about that as you may, your why from year to year may actually change a little bit. Uh, similar to that, there may be a new season ahead. It may be that you are in, in your career or your life that there is, there are going to be some changes ahead that you need to take into account as you're planning for the year ahead. Uh, there's, you know, life things maybe that you, you know, maybe you got married or you've got a house or you got uh, kids or you've got kids that are graduating or uh, you're retiring or, you know, 
the gambit of personal stuff that comes up. And maybe you move, you know, maybe you're moving from, uh, you know, could be one city to another, or maybe one country to another that is going to change a lot of your environment and access to certain tasks and roles and skills that you're going to have to incorporate into thinking about, well, how do I, where do I want to be three months from now, six months from now, a year from now? And I guess another key one is looking back at the year that you've gone through, is there, is there some things where you're just burned out or you, you got bored with something? Yeah, I'm using that sort of uh, developer example. Let's say you came into the year and you just loved writing Java code. And you realize about halfway through the year that you're just done with it. You know, you've done it for enough years that you just, it's just wrote that it doesn't, it doesn't challenge you anymore. You don't get the same excitement out of it or, you know, joy from it. So if there's some things that you, and that may be probably the most challenging of these items. If there's something that you've particularly that you've done for a while that you're pretty good at it, but you're bored of it or burned out, then, you know, you may have to sort of leave at the top. <laughs> it's where one of those kinds of things where you may you know, need to see if you can adjust your career path a little bit to make that something you don't do. You know, the, probably the, the most famous of these kinds of things would be um, when Michael Jordan many years ago went from basketball to baseball. Yeah, I think he never, I don't think he ever said he was bored with basketball, but obviously there was something about it that he, that did not appeal to him as much. So he you know, ch literally changed careers. And there are plenty of people out there that do that, that are, you know, maybe not even they're not at the height of their career necessarily, but they realize that the career path they're on is, is not, um, it's just not satisfactory to them. It's not bringing them satisfaction or joy. And if you're in that situation, it's, I think I always have said it will be better in the long run for you to find the thing that you do enjoy as opposed to, you know, just gutting it out with something you don't enjoy. But, you know, money and all that other kind of stuff just isn't isn't worth it if you're if you're not happy. So think about what is your why? What are the why do I want to continue in this career? What are the things that I want to work with? You know, what are the things that bring me joy? And incorporate that into our plans in the year ahead. And that may include that work itself you know, our career maybe doesn't bring us quite the same joy as something outside of it. So we need to, you know, adjust our approach to our career so we're not burning 80 hours a week. And instead, we can go do, you know, whatever that other thing is that we want to do. I think it's very important. I've, I've found this in the past few years, at least, is to sort of set a theme for a year. It helps at least for me, it helps um, sort of organize goals, if that makes sense, is, you know, sort of keep things that are in there that are focused on that theme. It, if you think of it as a, from an academic point of view, if you want to pursue a certain degree, then especially at like a university, there's tons of different classes you can take, but there are only certain classes that are really going to direct you towards that degree. So if you wanted to get that degree as fast as possible, you would make sure you got all of your core classes for that degree, and then you minimize the stuff, you know, the extra stuff you need to do. Otherwise, you may just look at all the classes and take almost a random scheduling of them and could take you many, many extra years to get that degree. So there's, in setting a theme, there's a lot of, you know, different things to think about and, and it is all very personal, but here's some things that sort of have helped me as well. Uh, first, I want to start. The theme is remember, this theme is basically your focus is what is it that you want to, what is it you want to accomplish in the year ahead? And this is key because it's a focus. It is, it's not 10 things, it's really ideally one. Uh, now, there may be multiple things that are part of that. I and mean, maybe you want to be, your focus is that you want to be a better value as an employee. And maybe part of that is that you're going to learn, uh, you know, a new spoken language, a new programming language, a new platform. I mean, there's a couple of things that, you know, they all go towards that theme. 
But in that case, your focus would be become more valuable to my employer. Um, it may be that your focus is I want to learn, uh, I want to be a better developer of mobile applications and you know, things like that. So that would still, it may be a, you don't want your focus to be too broad, but you do want, uh, you, it is okay if it's somewhat broad, uh, because the key is that you're going to bring that into a tighter focus by adding a couple of key, you know, goals. One of the things I find that's been very helpful is finding a word, you know, from the focus point of view, is finding a word that I'm going to use for the year. Uh, now, I do this on a personal level that is that goes beyond career, um, but it is, and that allows me to actually set a theme for both, you know, from career and personal and financial and all this kinds of other stuff. They all sort of wrap into that. And I think if you can get it down to a word, and it's not a bad theme to have. Uh, for example, I had one year where the word was learn, and I really reset uh, several of the things that were on my my roadmap, I guess, and focused on learning some new things. It's expanding my skills again. I hadn't done it for a while. I realized I enjoyed doing that, that I missed that. And so that became my theme. As so I was like, you know what, I'm, I'm gonna learn. That's, that's my year. And, those kinds of things, it's, it, it may be sort of broad, but I think if you can keep that word and that focus, that theme, um, it will really help you figure out what you should be doing and maybe what you shouldn't worry about. Uh, in doing those things, maybe there's a task or um, a series of tasks that you just, it will help you to just finish them that you want to get these things done, that they, they've been sitting on your plate, they've been languishing for a while. Um, and the theme may actually be, depending on what that, you know, there may be a task that you need to finish. So it could be get a degree or write a book or start a podcast or create an application or uh, do a professional presentation or um, you know, get married or buy a house or, you know, there's there may be certain things that are sort of that that task is sort of your primary focus, so you want to work towards that. Um, you definitely want to have in your theme some things that are uh, you're going to want it coming down to some things that are doable within the year. You know, being uh, I want to be the best baseball player in the year ahead. You know, maybe a bit. Yeah, it's probably going to be a bit too much, particularly if you don't even know how to play baseball, for example. But if you're pretty close, you know, if you're already playing at professionals, then maybe that's your theme. And it's not that you have to achieve that task, but maybe the the focus on that task is what will drive you through the year and, and allow you to really set some things in place to maybe maybe not complete that necessarily this year, but maybe in the years ahead. Uh, think about maybe... Maybe there's some new goals as we've talked about, you know, a word and a focus and this theme. Maybe there's some goals that are some new goals that you need to build into this year. Maybe you need to tweak a few of them that are that you had on your, you know, your roadmap or your list. Maybe there's a few you need to throw out. Maybe there's a couple of things where you say, you know, this is I've got some really cool stuff I want to do this year. This thing would be nice, but I'm not going to deal with it this year. You know, if I'm I'm not even going to let it distract me because it's not part of that focus. It's, it's watering down my focus. And all of this comes down to think about the you that you want to be and how do you get there in the year ahead? Not what your boss wants or your parents want or people at your friends want or whatever. It's like, what will make, what makes you happy? What will you be proud of doing, accomplishing or becoming in the year ahead and allow that to filter through your theme, your in your focus, so that you, you know, ideally, and that's really what we want out of this, is that three months, six months, twelve months from now, you're actually more comfortable in your skin and happier being yourself, and with and more proud of what you've accomplished. So, once we put all that together, we're getting close to you know, basically we're coming up to January one, and so what are we going to do? We want to make sure we start strong that we come out of the gate, you know, and it, with a good pace and, and ready to go. It's really hard to, to, you know, wait until January 31st or 
December 1st and really accomplish, you know, our especially annual level goals. So one of these things that you, you know, you see all the time and it just sort of stumbled across this. So I decided that, hey, you know, we can call this spark, which worked pretty good for, you know, sparking you uh, onto your new year. And uh, it really is set immediate, short and long term goals. This is about accountability, really. If you've got really, you know, immediate, like one or two days and short term uh, within the first month or even, you know, maybe as far out as the first quarter. And then, of course, the rest of your goals for the, the year. But giving yourself something that is a target that is achievable early is very key to things like setting up habits. I mean, if you think about the classic idea of habit is you, you know, if you do the same thing for, I think they say 21 days straight, that defines a habit. Well, that means that you're doing something that you've accomplished every day. And usually it's very short stuff. I mean, it's uh, like if you want to get into the habit of making your bed when you get up in the morning, go make your bed every day for 21 days straight. But that's minutes, maybe you know, to get that done, maybe less than that, depending on how wild you are when you sleep. Uh, but generally speaking, that's something that you can get accomplished quickly. And you want to make sure as you're building your roadmap and your goals and your plan for the year ahead, that's one of the things you keep in mind is what can, uh, or I guess as part of your planning is what can I do on a maybe on a daily basis or a, a weekly basis or, you know, every work day or every weekend, what is something that I can put on my task or to-do list that is reasonable for me to, to get done? Uh, which means you're probably not going to, it's probably not going to be something that's going to take you uh, 20 or 30 hours a week, you know, to do it or 20 or 30 hours whenever you get it done to get it done. Um, it could be as short as something that takes you 15 minutes uh, maybe something takes you an hour or two, but then, you know, maybe not, maybe it's an hour or two a week that you spend on something. And so you can, you know, sort of sprinkle that throughout the week. And the key is on those immediate goals. When you're starting, like come hell or high water, you want to hit that first couple of times that that goal comes up. You want to hit it. You want to succeed and get it done. Start getting the momentum to build that habit. Now, something that we often fail to do is the next one is the P of spark is plan, plan to start, get things in motion so that when you get to that first day, you have the things in place to get the work done. Uh, a, a developer example would be, you don't want to get into that first day where you're going to, let's say you're going to uh, build a Java application and you don't have the latest version, you know, the right version of Java installed on a machine, or you maybe don't have a machine set up to be development at all, or you haven't picked out an uh, integrated development environment. So the first day, instead of actually working on that application, you end up losing hours of time installing stuff and configuring things, stuff like that. Think about what, that first day doing that task is going to be like and plan for it enough to make sure that you have the things in place that you need. This may be uh, setting aside certain time. There may be some people that you need to talk to to let them know that, hey, this is what I'm going to do. Or there may be some people that you need something from. There may be something that you need to get. Um, you know, like example, if you, you, for some reason, let's say you want to grill out every day, you want to go use your grill every day and start on January 1. Well, if you don't have you know, a grill, then you would have to go get a grill the first day. Or if you don't have uh, your coals or your you know gas or whatever it is that you need to use, you need to make sure that you have the materials. So plan and be ready to hit the ground running. Avoid, and this is as we're, you know, we get, get in our first day and we're moving forward and we're starting to set these habits up. Avoid scope creep. You know, we complain about it with others when we're doing our, you know, through our career and, and, doing all these projects and stuff like that. And I think we recognize it somewhat to ourselves, but I don't know that we realize how damaging that can be as, as scope creep can very quickly take us off the rails and get us completely you know, diverted from our goals. So we want to 
as we're, you know, as we're getting these things done, we want to make sure that we are, you know, regularly, at least depending on how you do it, how often regularly needs to be, but take a look at what you're doing and see if there's some scope creep, are there some things you're doing that have taken you beyond what you really need to do? And if so, you know, trim the fat a little bit is get yourself back to focus. Uh, a great idea, a great concept that is similar to this is the idea of a cornerstone. If you have a cornerstone in a building, that is what sets what is the proper alignment. And if you think about a, let's say a, you know, one foot by one foot block that is a cornerstone. Well, if, if you keep adding blocks on that thing and you don't refer back to the cornerstone and you probably have seen this, and this is why contractors work the way they do, you'll see that it will actually end up drifting. It will not be a straight line because you're, there's gonna be, even if it's just a little bit off from brick to brick to brick, that little bit can add up. So the way to fix that, correct for that, is that you measure stuff based off of the cornerstone as opposed to the base, you know the most previous thing that was uh, that was laid down. The whole the old kids game of uh, telephone is similar, where you you have one person says something, they whisper it to somebody's ear, they whisper it to the next person, whisper, 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 and eventually the last person has something that is completely unintelligible based on what the original one was. Well, if the first person whispered the same thing to everybody, then you wouldn't have near the uh, the degradation of correctness, basically, that comes up. So avoid code scope creep. Keep you know regularly look back at what are your goals, what's your why, what is your your focus and your theme, and make sure that you're still maintaining that. Uh, and that's particularly important as you get further and further into the year. Where possible, the R is remove, remove obstacles. Managers that are, in my opinion at least, I think a lot of others out there, managers that are doing their job correctly are removing obstacles for their staff, for the people that work for them. If we are driving our own careers and, and goals, we, are, we have to manage that as well. That means we have to remove obstacles. So as we go through particularly, hopefully, you know, setting habits and things like that, we're going to experience things that maybe uh, slow us down or a problem. Uh, for example, maybe uh, you want to study something where you, you want to spend a half hour studying something every day. And then you find out that, you know, one of the problems with you being able to spend 30 minutes studying that thing is that you end up watching, you know, you watch TV six hours a day or you know, something like that, where you say, okay, well, maybe I need to change, you know, remove that, that TV habit or change it so that I free up some time. Uh, maybe there are some things that Maybe there's something that needs to be automated. You know, maybe I find myself spending hours a week working on, uh, or maybe outsource. You know, maybe I find myself spending hours a week working on my lawn, and it would be better for me to just get somebody else to do it and, and take, you know, so I can get that time back. And you know, things like that is look at what the obstacles are. What are the challenges to getting those, hitting those immediate, short, and long term goals? What are the things that, you know, sort of drag you down? and look for ways to remove those obstacles. And it, it may be a, a life-changing kind of thing. I mean, if it's, think about diets, you know, maybe your obstacle is that you have, uh, you want to lose weight and you have ice cream readily available. So maybe you need to find a way to not have ice cream readily available. And the K, keep your focus. The key to success is you look at all of the different things that are out there and all the different ways people achieve success, you're going to find out that really a lot of times you can find stuff boils down to keeping your focus. If you're trying to get to a destination and you keep that destination in mind, you're more likely to get there than if you are constantly thinking about other destinations or you know, allowing yourself to get distracted to other destinations. So keep your focus. Set your goals, plan to get that, those things, plan to hit the ground running, avoid scope creep, remove your obstacles, keep your focus. So let's talk a little bit about setting goals as we you know, think about our, we've put all this stuff in place. We've got our theme and our why and our word, and we've reviewed what we did last year and all that kind of stuff. 
I want to spend a little bit more time looking at here, you know, setting those goals. Short, medium, and long are going to be key for accountability. We want to be able to see on those short ones, we want to be able to give ourselves some victories where we have succeeded in doing something, you know, doing a task that moves us forward, that builds momentum. And that's that momentum is going to help us get some of those medium goals that are some things that are, they are uh, milestones, basically. These are things where we know that as we achieve these medium length goals, we're going to see real progress. For example, maybe you want to learn to play guitar. Your short goals may be, you know, learn a, a note here and a key there, a chord there, and maybe me, medium term goals as maybe there's certain songs, you know, learn a song or learn a specific song. And then your long-term goals are really, you know, your annual or beyond goals that are basically going to serve as the follow through is that you're doing this thing on it. You're, you're succeeding on a daily basis. You're completing tasks. You're hitting these milestones and these longer term goals are, are really, that's, it may be the actual ultimate prize of, you know, I want to be able to get a degree. That may be your long-term goal, uh, but it may be something that's, that's a little bit longer. That is a little less defined that is the, you know, I want to improve my career or I want to uh, learn another language or something like that, that while is defined, you know, you want to have some definition to it also maybe is open-ended enough so that you, achieving it is not necessarily a, uh, a stopping point. It may be that it is, but there's a lot of goals out there that it helps us to have a, a big win, you know, multiple milestones, like releasing version 1.0, but also enough of a definition that we know that once we release 1.0, we're actually looking forward to 2.0 and trying to sort of drive through that first version release, enjoy it, celebrate it, and have something that's going to be, you know, is the, the bigger, uh, they call it, it's, a uh, um, uh, they call it a swag and I forget, uh, it's a, a wild, awesome gold goal, you know, something that's just, you know, be the best ever, be the richest or the, uh, the smartest or most effective or something like that is giving you some long-term goals to really help give you a motivation for the short and medium. That cornerstone idea, review your goals regularly, make sure that you're, you're trimming away the scope creep. Um, with the short and the medium in particularly, and even some of the long, uh, although I guess long can be visionary and you don't have to worry as much, short and medium need to be well-defined and realistic. If you want to, let's say you've never picked up a guitar and your goal is that you want to be able to play 50 songs in the next month, I'm pretty sure that's not realistic for probably just about anybody. Um or it may be that, you know, it may not be well-defined. So it's just like, I want to be able to play a lot of songs in a month. Well, that's, what is a lot, you know, or you know, things like that. You want it to be well-defined because you want to be able to say yes. And this is for your own uh, edification, really, is to be able to say, yes, I accomplished it. Or no, I didn't. And it needs to be realistic because you want to be able to push yourself but not push yourself in such an insane way that either, you know, you you cause yourself harm to do it or that it's fairly quickly easy to say, you know, this was unrealistic. So I'm just going to bail out completely. You need to find that right balance of pushing yourself, but not pushing too hard. Track or log progress, even with personal goals, doing a regular, uh, you know, whether it's journaling or, uh, maybe a, you know, some people use blog sites where they just sort of blog regular, you know, daily, weekly, whatever, what they worked on, things like that. That is actually very valuable because it's going to help you as a retrospective, essentially, when you're done. As you complete things, the more information you have to review it in the year, you know, in the next year is going to allow you to better plan for future years. And this is particularly, it's a good time if you're looking back and there's a lot of things that you just don't uh, remember or have a lot of data about them to help you figure out how you can use those successes for future successes or avoid those failures as you continue on similar products, projects, tasks, 
at all, then this may be a good opportunity for you to see where, you know, there's some data that you want to track. There's some things that you want to log. Fewer or better. You got to, it goes back to focus. If you're, if you've got a whole bunch of different goals, it's going to be so hard to hit them because you're going to be changing gears all the time and you're going to have competing priorities. Uh, this is where, you know, a theme and things like that is going to help because if you have two or three very disparate goals that end up essentially almost fighting against each other, that friction is going to slow you down. Whereas if you have a couple of goals that are you know moderately similar or have a lot of similar tasks or uh, traits, then you're going to be able to build momentum on multiple things at a time. It's that killing two birds with one stone. Uh, that's why so often I have mentioned the idea of learning a language. Part of learning a new development language is find a product or a project that you want to do and do it in that development language. Because then you are creating that, you know, creating that product and you're learning at the same time. And those things work together. Uh, there may be some cases where they would fight against each other a little bit, for the, but for the most part, those are going to take you along the same path. And so you're going to, you're going to be able to often get some work done in on both towards both of those goals in the same period of time, you know, with the same exact work. So making a plan when you're actually making a plan to go through the uh, these goals and you know this year ahead there are some things that i find are very important to think about the first one is how much time are you really willing to spend on these goals looking at the year behind and what you did or did not like this is that why thing with these things that you want to do especially when you factor in all of the time that you have to spend doing other things, you know, whether it's as simple as, you know, sleeping and eating and uh, just healthy exercise, uh, maybe your day job, uh, you know, personal relationship time, stuff like that. How much time do you, are you willing to spend? And this is one of those things I have seen change dramatically through my career, at least where there's, you know, when you're young and single, you may have a whole lot of time to spend and then you get married and maybe you got a little less time. If you've got kids, you may have less time. Um, if you're an empty nester, you may have a ton of time. You know, it, if you've got, uh, illing, you know, uh, illing, if you have ill or, uh, you know, sick parents or relatives or, or, you know, anything like that or spouses or siblings, it, maybe that's going to adjust how much time you have available because you've got to deal with these other things. All of that should factor in to temper your goals in your roadmap is there may be a lot of, it may, it's, it's a situation where you may have a lot of things you really want to do or a couple of big things that you really want to focus on. But the reality is, is you really don't have that time. It's, that's not really what you're going to be willing to spend. And you don't want to set yourself up for failure by putting this big lofty goal, you know, almost particularly putting this thing that you really want to do into a situation where it is going to be, you know, constantly a battle of that and spending time on that versus spending time on other things. It's the it's the sort of the uh, point of very large number of Christmas movies that are out there. You know, if you think of like, uh, gosh, almost all of them, you know, Jingle All the Way and even a little bit the Santa Claus and some of those kinds of things where you always have the it's almost always it's the dad that works all the time, spends all his time focused on his job instead of on his family. And he realizes he really wants to spend more time with his family. Well, if you set your career up as this big thing and it's taking away from personal stuff, then you want to adjust. You know, if you're, or maybe you're spending so much time with your family that your career is suffering, you realize that you can't, you know, that you're going to have to actually cut back a little bit. I don't know if that's not many movies meant, you know, based on that, but there, there could be situations where you, you're, you know, maybe wasting a lot of time. Maybe you, you spend too much time, I don't know, watching TV or, or, reading pointless articles or something like out on Facebook, arguing with people that you don't know, stuff like that. Maybe you need to make some adjustments to make sure that you have the right, uh, uh, the right time available. As you're making a plan, 
Um, I'm going to jump to the last one here first, which is daily or weekly time blocks. I think it is very helpful to have a, a schedule that is easy to conceive, uh, it, it, to to grasp mentally. A, a full year long schedule can is I think sometimes too big because of just the amount of time. If you work that down to how is this going to how is this going to look on a daily or a lot of times a weekly basis? How much time am I going to need to spend on this and that? And how much do these other things, how time do these other things take up? Give yourself a, it gives yourself a framework to work with and to see where you're going to have opportunities to work on these goals. Now, as you start setting your goals and setting sort of the scope of what you want to achieve, you're going to need to think of, to set aside some time or have an opportunity to catch up because life will happen. There are going to be things that are happening that are going to take you off schedule. And so it helps immensely to have something factored in that is a way to catch up. You Maybe it's uh, a day a week that you don't plan on doing any work, but that you could, you know, put a little hours towards, you know, these goals. Or maybe it's, you know, once a month. Maybe you're going to say, you know what, I'm going to uh, do all these things, but one weekend a month I'm going to go – I'm going to set aside so I can catch up, you know, for the for the uh, the work that I've you know done in the last month. Things like that. Build those into your schedule, and then and this goes back to really defining your goals properly. Is know when to stop, whether it is stop for the day, stop for the week, uh, you know, stop and mark a task complete. It is not uncommon for us to continue to work on something beyond when it needs to be worked on or to get sidetracked by something we're working on. You know, it may be that to get the right amount of sleep, you need to be stop working at, you know, 10 o'clock at night. Otherwise you're going to end up working too late and you're not going to sleep well. And then all that's going to add up. So know that, you know, this is, this is what I need to do. I've got this schedule. I've blocked these things off. I've blocked off 15 minutes a day that I'm going to work on this thing. If if I go to 30 minutes a day, it's going to start eating into other stuff that I don't want it to. So, you know, know when you need to stop and when you have hard stops and when you can uh, adjust or shift things as needed. And it may be that you say, all right, you know, I'm, I'm on a roll. I'm going to spend 30 minutes today, but then I'm going to not work on it tomorrow for 15 minutes. So I'm going to get that that 15 minutes I'm going to take back and use to apply to something else that needs to get done. So hopefully as we've sort of walked through this and in some cases almost trudged through some of these things, um, hopefully you've seen that we can find material for improvement in the future based on some of the past experience. We can look at where we have failed and we want to avoid those. We can look at places where we've succeeded and we want to replicate that as much and as often as possible. We want to think about what life's going to look like on day one moving forward and plan for a good start. And that's that whole spark idea that I came up with, which is not taking my, you know, holding my mind yet. So it's, you know, set your goals, plan, avoid scope creep, remove obstacles, and keep your focus. Set meaningful goals, set things that will you know, that are milestones or something so that you know you've achieved it. And hopefully that, uh, well, one, that work our goals that as you achieve them, they work you towards these bigger goals, this, you know, this theme, uh, but also things hopefully that you can, you can take a second and celebrate. So that it builds your sense of confidence and uh, is a morale booster that you did get that done. And then I, I preach this so often, but I find that this is so huge in uh, goal setting and resolutions and sticking to them and stuff like that. It's hold yourself accountable. If you've got somebody else to hold you accountable, you know, like a mentoring group or something like that, then, you know, throw those ideas out to them, or write this stuff down, tell somebody that matters so that at the very least, every so often they'll say, how's that thing going? And that will be, you know, and that'll maybe stick in your mind that, gosh, the next time they ask me how this thing is going, I want to be able to say that it's going well. And uh, that's going to help us you know, make a plan and stick to us is that we, you know, we've, we've got to go. That's why we start with these small goals. 
is get some things in motion, get some things accomplished and allow that to build momentum and build habits and get you to the end goal. All right. Questions or comments? I have a, a comment that's going to lead into a question that's based in a story. I used to listen a lot to Dan Carlin's Hardcore History. Rob, I think you introduced me to him. Yep. Um, uh, there's a podcast on, uh, there's a session on um, Winston Churchill. And I kid you not, every time I listen to that episode, I feel like I'm just ready to just go. It's a very, he's a very inspiring figure from history. Uh, I felt that same urge during uh, this um, uh, presentation. So again, thank you. And so this leads now into my comment and question. Um, you know, one of the things that I, uh, there are multiple things that I need to get better at. Debriefing after projects, debriefing after a year, um, and then planning ahead. What I find is that it's easy for me to 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 know the how. If I get a get a problem with the, uh, in front of me, I know how to get it done. And oftentimes, I will take steps and complete that project. You know, but it's all in my head. It's the how that's in my head, and then I implement what's in my head. The the translation from how to do something to planning to do something. Can you help me close that gap? How do I plan? How do I translate the how that's in my head to a, a well flushed out plan that can be executed executed upon uh, by people outside of me? That's a, it's actually, it's an excellent question. And um, I, I think it's, you know, sort of from a personal point of view, I think that's exactly the kind of question you need to be answering at this point, you know, that you be, or need to be asking and, and determining and answering for where you're at. That is, a, to me, that is, that's part of a growth in our careers. Um, and really, I think in almost any career, as you go from being able to do to being able to um, to plan, which allows you to, to maybe incorporate uh, contingencies and things like that a little better, but then also to be able to then communicate that to other people, to, to lead, you know, or to mentor. And it is, for me, I think... <sighs> I'm not sure that this isn't something that is a sort of is really sort of personal to each individual, uh, how they best do that. Um, so I'll I'll sort of throw some ideas out of, of what I have done over the years and hopefully that sparks some things. And we'll see if that's you know if that's something that works for you as well. Um I do know that the you know some of the stuff is I've talked through it with other people and actually listening to other um I guess they're productivity specialists and stuff like that, you know, getting things done, things like that. Um, I think there are definitely some, uh, some common traits that you'll find. Now the, the interesting thing about the how is, um, and this was for me, when it's in your head, then you just, you just sit down and you start doing it. It actually, in a sense, takes more time. Well, actually, and not even in a sense. I mean, directly, it takes more time to put that down, to create. You know, if you think about a um, like a Jira project to do X, and you already know how to do it in your head, it would take you time to build out each of those tickets, and then you know, even even if you just built them out to put it out as a server roadmap. But especially then, if you do that and you you move them to in progress to complete and stuff like that, that's additional time that you didn't necessarily have to spend. The flip side of that is that when I list out what I'm going to do, when I spend that, and really it's sort of like a design time, and I write down, these are the steps I'm gonna take, it helps me to flesh those steps out because there's things that I'm going to, that I know I've got to do, but sometimes I don't think about them right away and I start implementing and I come back and I go, Oh yeah, that's right. I got to do this other thing. And so it's, it's not a straight line of uh, work that I do. I sort of, you know, I'll go off in a direction and I'll go, Oh yeah, I got to go to this other thing. And so I jump over there and do the other thing. And then I come back and theoretically it's all in my head it has been in my head from the start, but when I write it out, I'm more likely to have a, 
uh, I guess a, a logical approach to getting those things done, if that makes sense, that it's these things are going to, I'm going to get the things I should do early. I'm going to get done earlier and the things I can wait till later, I'm going to get those things done later. And initially the way I did it was I would just like this, I would sit down at the beginning at, you know, usually at the end of the year to plan for the year ahead. And I would just write some things down to say, I want to accomplish this. I want to accomplish that. And it really, I think initially was a, was an accountability thing. So I would look at my list and say, oh, shoot, I didn't get that done. Or, Oh, Hey, I, I did get that done. But doing that and learning how you think, in my case, how I think and where I'm, uh, likely to have gaps, you know, the other things I'm more likely to forget about actually helped me not forget about those going forward because I would say, oh yeah, don't forget, you know, this is something you almost always forget about. You, you know, you've, you did this project and you didn't think about this thing right away. And it, it ended up being a, you know, sort of a pain because you had to, you know, shoehorn it in late, you know, stuff like that. And it allows others Potentially, if you write this stuff down, it allows others to take a look at it and say, hey, did you think about this? Did you think about that? Um, and that's, that is the, I think, the next step of, step of evolution. It's uh, the first thing is to do it, is to at least start and give yourself some period of time. And the end of the year is always sort of a good one to just say, you know, I'm going to take, you know, on a, one of my days off, I'm going to take an hour and just sort of sit down and think through what do I want to do in the year ahead? Ideally, you know, look at what you did in the year behind, you know, this presentation basically ideally is what you're going to do. But if you at least start with looking at the year ahead and thinking through that a little bit and writing a couple of things down or taking some notes or, you know, at least setting some markers for yourself, then the next time you do it, you'll probably want to, you'll have learned. So you'll do it a little better, but also you'll probably, uh, grow that process. There'll be more details to it because of uh, past failures and successes where you've seen that, uh, you know, these are some things I failed to do and that hurt me, you know, hurt my progress. And here's some things I did well, and I want to do those more or do those deeper. You know, maybe it's, you set, you find that you set three goals for the year and it really worked out well. So now you're going to back that track off. You're going to set three goals for every quarter. And, you know, they maybe not as big, but um, the idea here is that you're, you're seeing this thing. And so now you can use it. You know, you worked in one context and you can apply that to another context. Um, I do want to mention the whole uh, positive boost that you, you got out of this presentation. I mean, uh, first of all, thank you, you know, very much for those kind words. But the other thing is there are, as you mentioned, you've got the, uh, you know, the hardcore history episode that spoke to you. Um, there's things like that. As I, I, I like the four hour work week. I don't know why that's, that's just something that I, I listen to that on audiobook. You know, I don't know, every, maybe every other year or something like that. Uh, there's also rework that is the, uh, was it the 57 signals or, or 37 signals, uh, I can't think. I think it's Joshua Freed. I think is his name um, is a pretty good one. Or Crush It uh, by Gary Vaynerchuk, just because it's just it's just a positivity kind of thing. Um, there's you know there's things like that that are good for us to know that are uh, you know cheerleaders for us or something that sets us in a positive track. Yeah, and maybe if you feel yourself, you know, if you get to a point at any point where you feel like you're, I don't know, floundering a little bit, or you feel like you're, you know, you don't have the same, you know, pep in your step, you know, maybe it's a good time to go back and, you know, listen to things like that. Uh, so that may be, you know, part of what you want to think about in the year ahead is that maybe as you, as part of your uh, annual review and planning is that you listen to one of those things or you reread one of those things that is a, uh, yeah, that 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 sparks you to do something better, that that gets you motivated to do it, so that you have that motivation at the right time when you can sit down and you can do some planning and you can do some reviews and you have that extra energy that comes from that that positivity. Did that? I know I I went took a long way around. Did that sort of give you some ideas and, and answer your question a little bit? Yes, sir. Excellent, excellent advice. And one thing that resonated with me. Uh, especially was 
um, I, I'll phrase it in the way that I received it, uh, promoting the benefit of planning in my mind. I, 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 ha I know the benefit, but it, it doesn't outweigh my drive to solve problems sometimes. And so I'll just dive into problem solving. Whereas if I promote it and give it a heavier weight, uh, I'll do it more often. And uh, uh, everything about, you know, going to those things that, you know, inspire me and, you know, give me a pep in my step. And I definitely add that in, in as well to, uh, to, to, to do that more. Thank you. Yeah, I think you probably, uh, this is something that I, I know I struggled with and that maybe is a similar struggle you have is that desire to get something done. Um, I think it's useful for me. It's proved very useful to remember the old saw of measure twice and cut once. And that applies to uh, design and you know, designing what we're building. And so I've thought about, you know, that's allowed me to, or pushed me to spend more time on design as opposed to jumping into implementation at times. And then also from a, a, uh, a life planning or you know goal setting is to spend that time is to design design those tasks and those goals and those milestones a little bit, uh, and I you know I, I refine them more as I've I've gone further along, so that I you you sort of think through that a little bit, and hopefully it will help us um, maybe avoid some obstacles and uh, you know have a smoother road in, in doing so. Excellent question comments and all around. Any other uh, questions? Got me very motivated for this year. Um, I'm probably going to go back and listen to Vanderchuk again this week. <laughs> Good. That was that was one of the things I was hoping, you know, to get out of this presentation. And that's actually that's the it's sort of been the theme of uh, I've, I haven't done I've, I've cut back a little bit on a couple of the uh, the number of epi podcast episodes this month just because I've got a lot of other stuff going on and. But that's been sort of the theme as well, is, to, and it's been partially driven by me, as I just I felt like it was a good time for me to get, I needed to get remotivated on some stuff. So I'm glad that this you know has been has seemed motivational as well, because that was definitely one of the goals. Any other questions or comments? All right. Well, as always, thank you for your time. Thank you for your your questions, your comments. Um, we've got plenty of ways to get a hold of us. If you have any, you know, any additional information or questions or anything that you need from us, info at developpreneur.com for email. We've got the contact us form on developpreneur.com. You can follow us on Twitter at developpreneur. Uh, we've got our YouTube channel that you can find links to that. Vimeo at vimeo.com slash developpreneur. Facebook.com developpreneur. Uh, yes, we're still on Facebook. You're still out there on YouTube. And uh, we've been cranking out you know, a decent amount of content. So uh, definitely feel free to enjoy that wherever possible. Share with your friends, your families, and anybody else that would care. And if you have any, you know, uh, questions, comments, or suggestions, we're always open to those because our goal is making every developer better. And the best way to do that is to, you know, help you be the you that you want to be. Thank you for your time, and we will talk to you next time. <laughs>